All right, it is my unboxing of Record Store Day 2024. And here's what you can expect from this video. I'm taking a look at Lady Tron's sophomore album, Light and Magic. I haven't listened to this album in probably 10, maybe even 15 years. I'm kind of curious how it stands up to the test of time. Lady Tron is an English indie electro pop, electronic pop band. They formed in 1999 and they are still active to this day in 2024. That's 25 years. Now, if you're not familiar with the band, maybe you're familiar with the name. They take their name from a Roxy Music song called Ladytron. Why do they matter? Take Brian Eno, for example. He says they are among the best creators of English pop music, basically of all time. So Brian Eno, thinks you should pay attention to this. Lady Tron's album Light and Magic is the band's second album. It was originally released in 2002. It hit many best of 2002 year-end lists. Rolling Stone, NME, Drowned in Sound, among others. I don't really have anything else by them, nor have I listened to this, like I said, in a good decade to a decade and a half. I'm kind of excited to dig in, so why don't we take a look and at least see what the vinyl looks like today. This says it is a limited edition 2LP blood red vinyl. It features hit song 17 and Evil. You've got this net with two T's work with an E not O. 40 years sticker. Record Store Day sticker, vinyl voice editions. I don't know what any of that means other than Record Store Day, but you do have the track list, the other members, and um, yeah, let's dig in. This is not on a gatefold sleeve. It is just a standard sleeve, which is no big deal. Now, this one I think ran me about $30 on roughtrade.com. I picked it up on their day after sale and yeah, they don't have any copies left. Two weeks after record store day, a week and a half after record store day, uh, this is running for about 80 bucks. And it's been about that since the day after record store day. So we might see it come down a little bit as stores find copies and try to push them out at lower prices and stuff like that, but who knows? So here are the labels you can see. And it looks like this has some kind of translucency, transparency to it. I do like that. There's that blood red vinyl for you. I think that looks great. And of course, I'll do some B-roll that makes it look a little bit better. I did not see any supplemental material in this at all. No booklets, no inserts, just the two LPs, and that is it. So next, I'm gonna spend a day or two giving this album a listen, and I'm gonna report back to you right after this. It's the next day, and I've had a chance to give Lady Tron a few listens. And first, I gotta address a few elephants in the room. Vinyl actually hasn't been reissued since 2006. Well, the Rough Trade website listed it as 2,500, which I'm guessing is what was used to reference the quantity displaying on Discogs. The problem is that the Record Store Day website lists it as a quantity of 1,500. I've noticed these discrepancies before with Rough Trade and with Record Store Day, so I don't know if it's something that Record Store Day misrepresents the quantity or if it's laziness on part of Rough Trade. Either way, it's a discrepancy. One thing I was a little bit surprised to find is that this is actually pressed to 45 RPM. The sound is super crisp and defined, pretty much audiophile quality. Wax is dead silent and extremely dynamic. The low end is incredible. It has a great beat to it. You definitely want to turn up the bass on this one. And the stereo mixing and mastering on this particular pressing is truly phenomenal. Now, I did find someone post something on Discogs. I, I'm just going to quote it directly. The red vinyl is quiet. The music contained on each side is the same as previous pressings. However, curiously, they managed to cut the sides at 45 RPM to take up less space than 33 RPM did. How did they achieve this? By cutting the music not as loud as on the 33 RPM. On the 45 RPM, you will need to turn up the volume. And for some people, 
it may be distressing, but the sound quality makes up for it. The font for the words light and magic on the front picture of the sleeve is different from the 2006. The quality of the photograph on the sleeve front and back has slightly more contrast, but leans a bit more on the red than 2006. The 2024 tends to be a bit more shiny, whereas the 2006 more matte. I find that super fascinating, and this comes from somebody who also had both pressings. Digging into the album, I mean, 17, we gotta, we gotta call that one out. It's a major standout, and I feel I've heard it somewhat more recently, maybe a cover or something like that. The song was spotlighted on Party Monster from 2003. Uh, it, it's super minimalistic, with just four lines that are repeated throughout the song, backed by a solid electro-pop beat. 17 is far from the lone standout track on the album as well. Really enjoying Flip Gear Switch, Blue Jeans, Evil, and honestly, pretty much the entire thing. Overall, the album is much, much better than I recall when originally hearing it back in the early to mid aughts. There's almost something German, it seems, to the stoic lyrical delivery that I really, really like. And I mean, maybe there's something a little bit British to it as well. After all, they're from England. There are a few weak points on the album, but it's to the point where it's not even really mentioning what they are. It's that good. Light and Magic is not timeless. It's futuristic. It's currently 2024, and this album was released 22 years ago, yet it sounds just as futuristic now as it did back then. And that's a sign of a truly great electronic pop album. It extends beyond that timelessness to just being flat out futuristic. I think it's an absolutely stunning album that would be worthy of any fan of indie, electronic, and any electro pop. This album's for you. It's worth that 80 bucks. So there's my thoughts on Lady Tron's Light and Magic. As one person said it many, many moons ago, this dude is a damn nerd. I am Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, and I'll see you in the next video. And speaking of, we'll be digging into this guy right here. Waffles, why are you being like this? Why are you being like this? You're so cute.